Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is from chapter number 14 and it's about uh, filters and this is on the request of a student from Iraq. So let's see the question. Determine what type of filter is shown in figure. So this is the figure and you can see there's an inductance and there's a capacitance and resistance. The first part is to determine the type of filter and the second part is to calculate the corner frequency or cutoff frequency and these are the values given. Now this has been solved in the book obviously it's an example but uh, there are some assumptions that have been made which is difficult for a common student to follow. So I'll try to clarify that. So the first of all, we need to convert the circuit into frequency domain or S domain. Remember, this is in time domain. So we have got to convert it into frequency domain or time domain. And then we have to find the transfer function, which is written as HS V0 over VI. Now, the difference between the frequency domain and S domain is that for frequency we write J omega L and for S domain we simply replace J omega by S. This is just to make it easy to write uh, so we don't have to write J omega every time simply we write S L. And similarly for capacitance it is 1 over J omega C or 1 over S C. So we'll follow this the S domain part and so the circuit now L becomes SL and C becomes 1 over SC and now you can see these two are in parallel so we'll solve them we'll, we'll give them a name as uh, impedance Z and impedance Z is actually parallel of R and 1 over SC which I hope you know how to solve parallel. So I'm just following this technique plus the two and multiplication and simplifying. This is the final answer for Z. So we have now this circuit, we have found the value of Z. Need to find out V out over V in. That means we need, if we find V out in terms of V in, we'll get this so v out can be found from this circuit by voltage deviation rule i hope you know what is voltage deviation rule so by voltage deviation rule or vdr v out will be the input voltage divided by the total impedance sl plus z and multiplied by the impedance across which we want to measure so z mm -hmm. And from here, we take VI to the left hand side. So this is our VO over VI or HS. Now we'll plug in the value of Z from here. Simplify and just pause the video and try to follow this. I have taken LCM here. And then uh, we get the two terms cancel, both the denominators. So we get as shown here. Further simplification will result in this equation. And so we write that HS is this equation R S square R L C S L R. So we are here. And now we uh, go back and uh, uh, from S domain we go back to frequency domain. So we plug J omega for S and also for this S square, I've just explained it, that X S square will be actually J omega square, which is J square omega square and J square is minus one. And that is why we get a minus sign there, so minus omega square. So S square, we write now minus omega square and rest uh, change the S here also for J omega. So this is the circuit now in frequency domain. And if we take the real part separately, so this is the imaginary part, we take it right, and this is the real part. 
the real part and imaginary part in the denominator and now if we put omega is equal to zero the, the frequency omega zero then what will happen this term will become zero this will become zero so r over r is one and what if omega is put infinity that means the denominator will be, become infinite and anything divided by infinity is zero so these are the two extreme of omegas and now we can plot this is the omega axis this is the magnitude axis at omega is equal to zero the maximum value will be one at omega is equal to infinity it should be zero but since we are not at infinity therefore this will keep going 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 but it will be very close to zero so this is uh, the graph plot of the magnitude and from here you can see that the lower frequencies are passing but the higher frequencies are attenuated therefore this filter will be called the low pass filter but in the book here they written it second order low pass filter why do we call it second order because the circuit has two energy storage elements l and c if it were only l or only c then it will be first order but if there is l and c both then it will be called second order so this is second order low pass filter so this is the answer of the first part now we find the corner frequency or cutoff frequency now what is corner frequency i'm just repeating i'm sure you know it you see when we are talking of this graph we don't know where it will end and which point we should consider to be ending for that we take an uh, ideal case that it is continuing and then suddenly it is dropping to zero and this point or this graph crosses our original graph at a point uh, 0 0.707 of the magnitude which is also one over under two of the magnitude so the frequency at which this happens this crosses the two graphs touches that is called the cutoff frequency or the corner frequency omega c so we need to find this one we need to find omega c now from this equation we have to find first of all the mod of the magnitude and we know that if you have uh, in the form of x plus j y z then the magnitude will be square of the two under root so we'll follow the same formula here so taking the square and under root um, this will be the magnitude and since we are at this point, want to find this point so at this point the magnitude will be half so when h is one over under root two not half actually one over under root two then the frequencies will be called omega c or the cutoff frequency or the critical frequency so now from this we'll find omega c just simple uh, taking the square both sides cross multiplying further simplifying taking r1 from here common so r square r square gets cancelled so this is the equation that we will follow so this equation now will plug in the values of r l c earlier we did not plug in the value because that would have been created a mess in the whole calculation so now we'll put the values and so putting the values we get this equation and from here a little bit of a simplification uh, squaring this one and now there are two methods in the book now so if we simplify this this equation will be of the form shown here a x4 b x square uh, plus c uh, whereas we want equation in this form a x square plus b x plus c so that we can find the root using this formula therefore we have to do some uh, changes 
modification and that modification is that for omega c square we take a new variable simply we call it w and with this we continue so our equation now will be like this and this we can open further by opening this uh, whole square thing and further simplification further simplification and now this is in this proper form that is ax square bx and c and now we can either use this formula or we can use the calculated uh, in co uh, equation mode to solve this so i'll use that function to find uh, the root and uh, let me show that so what we need to do is uh, on our computer first of all we have to set the mode that is here and we select 5 for equation and then our is uh, the quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c so option 3 will select and now we got to input a b c now from here you can see a is 16 10 raised to the power minus 12 so let's try that 16 into 10 power minus 12 equal sign then b is minus 7 10 raised to the power minus 6 that is minus 7 into 10 power minus 6 equal and then c is minus 1 so it is minus 1 equal then we press equal again to get the answer so this is the answer of the first root x1 is 550942 550942 there is another root if you press equal sign again so we, we get the x2 root now x2 is negative so we will reject it because the uh, frequency cannot be negative so we will just take the first one this one and now if you recall w was actually omega c square so from here we can find omega c to be under root of this which is 742 radians per second so this is the answer now the book has followed another method so and i had difficulty understanding but finally i found a technique to uh, follow that and understand so let's see that So what book is saying that is, let's assume that the omega c or the critical frequency is in kilo radians. So when it is in kilo radians and if we again just like the previous one if we assume it to be w then it will be w kilo radians that means it will be w 10 raised to the power 3 and so we'll use this value so wherever there is wc we'll use w 10 raised to the power 3 that should be uh, a square here so assuming wc to be uh, sorry omega c to be w into 10 raised to the power 3 we plug in here in this equation so wc is uh, omega c is w 10 raised to the power 3 square then multiplied by 4 10 raised to the power 6 square similarly here it will be w 10 raised to the power 3 square and now if we uh, multiply this will be w square 10 raised to the power 6 4 10 raised to the power minus 6 similarly here w square 10 raised to the power 6 and this is 10 raised to the power minus 6 now the advantage of this is that these are will uh, get cancelled 
then that is the power uh, six will get cancelled Now, in this case also, uh, we can see that when we open this, this will be, this equation will be with the power 4, like this, uh, as in the previous slide we said. But we want it in to be in this form, quadratic form. And therefore, here also we have to do some assumption. And that assumption is that for w square, we choose another variable y. And therefore, our this equation will be in this form, opening and further simplifying. Now, this is the proper form of, uh, uh, of quadratic equation. And here also, we can either use the uh, formula or we can use uh, the calculator as we have been shown in the Next page from here, we can use the calculator to find the answers. Let's go to the calculator, clear. Now, we, for A, we have now 16 only here. We plug in 60, 16, sorry, equal sign. Then for B, it is only 7 minus. 7 equal and c is minus 1 so minus 1 equal and then press equal again so x1 is this value to get it in proper form we'll press sd it is 0 0.55094 so 0 0.55094 and if you press it equal sign again we we'll get the x2 which is a negative value, so negative 113. And as we discussed in the previous slide, that negative will not be considered. So cut this. So this is our y1 or y. And we had assumed y to be equal to w square. So that means, and w is actually.